Uh, I'd like to turn now and go back to the United States to Jean-Claude Ruva, who's uh, Ruva is, uh, in fact embedded in the United States and a longtime observer of American foreign policy and domestic policy. Jean-Claude? Yes, good, good afternoon, good morning for me. I'm delighted to be able to speak to you today and to listen to some of uh, the panelists who have expressed themselves before me. I'm sorry I couldn't be in Abu Dhabi, but I'm glad at least and spend some time with you. Uh, let me uh, start by talking about the midterm election. You've heard my democratic friends on the panel talking about the fact that it was really not what we were expecting, that effectively a surge or a wave or a tsunami of the public and what expected. The reality is that things are not exactly the way it's been described. If you look at states like Florida, where Governor DeSantis was re-elected with a margin of 20% when he was barely elected the last election. When you look at Texas, when you look at uh, Georgia, effectively, as one of the panelists say, you said, this is not a defeat for the Republicans. It's a defeat for Trump. And that's quite obvious. Even in my state of New York, the Republicans made significant progress and we were discussing that with you a couple of days ago. So the midterm election, yes, we have a slight majority of Republicans in the House. We have a slight majority of Democrats in the Senate. Now, what's the impact on foreign policy? Uh, I'm not going to make predictions. I'm simply going to state two things which, to me, are uh, the result of the election. <clears throat> Number one, and that's the, uh, particularly the uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflagration, the United States has largely benefited from this conflict. Through the United States and the foreign policy of the Biden administration has been to support the Zelensky administration from the very beginning with massive financial and military aid. But the, the U.S. has largely benefited from it for a variety of reasons. Number one, and thanks largely to the last administration, the U.S. are practically energy independent. And they are exporting LNG to Europe, as you know, and they are benefiting from that. So this is one aspect. The net effect of that is also to attract investors to the United States. Some European companies have already shifted some of their operations from Europe to the U.S benefit from the subsidies and benefit from the tax incentives that the Biden administration is granting to those that are operating in the United States. And this is part of the so-called inflation reduction act, which I agree with the other panel, it is not really a reduction of inflation, but it's purely another form of protection. And that's benefiting not just the US, it's also benefiting our partners in North America, like Canada and Mexico. So uh, this is uh, another aspect of this benefit to the U.S. Also the fact that uh, the contribution to defense that was a request of the previous administration, whether it's the Obama administration, the Trump administration, and the Biden administration, has now taken effect in Europe, where several countries have announced that they will increase their defense spending, starting with Germany. I mean. But the benefit also for the U.S. is that they are not spending by buying of European equipment from France or forming joint venture or alliance. They're buying F-35 from the U.S. So that's another benefit from the U.S. NATO, which was questioned by the previous administrations, also is now threatened by the inclusion of Sweden and Finland, which would have been unthinkable if we hadn't had the conflagration in Ukraine. So we, we, are, we are in a situation where effectively the U.S. has greatly benefited from. This is in a way a paradox, but this is the reality. Second aspect, uh, second point that I would like to uh, discuss a little bit uh, is the, the fact that there might be changes in the foreign policy, simply because there is a change of control in the House of Representatives. 
as you know, the House of Representatives has the power of the purse, what we call the power of the purse. They control finance. So if they want to pass legislation, if the administration wants to get more money, he has to get it from Congress. And Congress starts with the House of Representatives. Without a majority in the House of Representatives, money won't be spent, money won't be authorized. So I, I have to remind you that there is a tradition in the United States of isolationism. It started many years ago and it's still alive. I mean, one, has one on the left and one on the right. It's not just one side. You have the traditional uh, part of the Republican or the libertarian leaning part of the Republican Party represented by somebody like Senator Rand Paul, who, for example, has been all along opposed to uh, intervention in Afghanistan, but also intervention to, to a large extent in Ukraine. And he was one of the few in the Senate who opposed the 40 billion that was proposed in May this year. And his argument was that we shouldn't spend money that we don't have. And uh, we uh, should spend this money if we can get it on domestic issues instead of spending it uh, far away from home without any direct benefit for the uh, security of the United States and its inhabitants. And uh, his argument was that we, we, borrow, we spend money that we don't have and we borrow it from China. Uh, one word of, on, on this, because there is a lot of misconception about the impact of uh, the Chinese uh, involvement in the United States debt. As you know, the United States has 31 billion of debt. And six or seven billion is really held by government agencies. Uh, the trust, the social security, the federal reserve system, the rest 24 billion more or less, a trillion, sorry, is held by the public and the part of it is held by foreign. And there's the percentage of foreign debt, the, the public debt of the United States held by foreigners is much less, for example, than in France. In France, it's well over 50% owned by foreigners. In the United States, it's barely 30%. And the Chinese represent less than one trillion now. Contrary to what many people think, the Chinese are not the largest foreign holder of United States debt. This is the Japanese now with 1.3 trillion. So we are not that dependent from, from China. And this is something that has to be taken into account when we discuss the overall relationship. I'm not going to spend any time talking about China. I know people talked about it and some of the panelists too. So my uh, also, on the foreign policy, you remember when Biden was elected, he said that I will have a foreign policy for the middle class. I never really understood what he meant by that, but some of you may have a better explanation. Effectively, uh, there's not been so far very many changes. Of course, there's been more emphasis on human rights. There was this meeting, first meeting with the Chinese in Alaska, which was a disaster. There was the pullback from Afghanistan. Personally, I support the pullback from Afghanistan. I simply consider that it was done in a dreadful way. And there are many people who feel that it could have been handled in a much better way. That had an impact because the uh, confidence of some of the allies in the United States has been severely weakened by the way uh, the Biden administration managed the pullback from, from Afghanistan. And that has certainly an impact on the position of China vis-à-vis -vis Taiwan. So the Biden administration may say they will support Taiwan and they will defend Taiwan, but there's still a question of how is that going to be implemented if, God forbid, China tries to invade Taiwan. I'm not going to spend more time. I think I've probably used most of it. I just wanted to give you this sort of balanced view that uh, the U.S. has benefited particularly from the Ukraine-Russian war, and at the same time, we are entering a period of two years that's going to be a little bit more challenging, and where we might see the impact of this divided government that ultimately is the characteristic of the U.S. Thank you very much, Jean-Claude, and um, uh, those are interesting comments, especially about the debt, I had no idea. Um,